Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this unresolved mystery coming from the center of our own galaxy. The mystery of this strange glow that the scientists detected back in 2009 that still doesn't actually have a good explanation but that some of the recent studies decided to investigate in a little bit more detail trying to discover what it could be and also what it couldn't be. In the process also providing enough evidence suggesting that this could technically be dark matter after all. Now originally this unusual glow was discovered back in 2009 when the scientists using Fermi telescope, and this was when the Fermi telescope just started operating, decided to subtract all of the other possible glow visible here and try to see if they can discover something else unusual. And they found that even by removing pretty much most of the other light coming from the center, there was still this unusual excess of gamma ray radiation. And they refer to this as the galactic center gamma ray excess, or also known as galactic center giga electron volt excess. But nobody really knew exactly what it was, and Fermi telescope also started making a lot of other discoveries, so this wasn't really a priority anymore. With the biggest discovery of course being the Fermi bubbles, named after the telescope. But this didn't change the fact that there was still no good explanation to what exactly this was in the middle of the galaxy, producing approximately 2% more gamma radiation than should be produced coming from this region. So in other words, the success wasn't really that great, it was only 2%, but it was still significant enough that it needed an explanation. Although one of the first potential explanations did involve dark matter. And as a matter of fact, that's the explanation that most scientists kind of decided to go with. But by 2016, some scientists started to think that maybe it wasn't dark matter and a better explanation could be used here for one important reason. When some of the scientists analyzed the close-ups of those gamma ray emissions, they realized a lot of these gamma ray emissions, excess gamma ray emissions, were not really that smooth. They were more or less clumpy and seemed to have been distributed in a way that suggested these tiny objects in various locations across the central region with extremely energetic objects in the middle. And the most obvious explanation for the paper back then was basically that we're looking at hundreds and maybe even thousands of different pulsars, very powerful pulsars, that were producing a lot of gamma ray energy. So much as a matter of fact that, well, it would probably need its own explanation for why they were producing so much. But assuming that there are like a lot of them everywhere, specifically all located in the central region itself, it could potentially explain what we're observing here. But generally, because this region is so crowded and there are so many things going on, this was still not really a conclusive explanation because something else could have been happening here, something else that the scientists just don't really understand. And then there were obviously some other theories proposing that maybe this was just excessive energy from the black hole in the middle, maybe something else going on with the accretion disk and so on. So there were definitely a lot of ideas, but the best two explanations were still either a lot of pulsars or the dark matter, specifically dark matter made out of what we refer to as weakly interacting massive particles, also known as WIMPs, one of the explanations for what dark matter could be. And if one WIMP and one anti-WIMP suddenly collide with one another, just like all other particles and antiparticles, they produce a tremendous amount of energy, and in this case they would produce gamma rays. So this explanation still actually made quite a lot of sense. Oh, and the reason I'm showing you this beautiful photograph taken by Carl Anderson back in 1933, this is because this is actually the first ever photograph of the positron, the first picture of the antimatter ever observed. And what you're looking at here is a kind of a plate made out of lead, that's meant to slow down the positron as it enters this location. And the positron itself is seen as this very unusual line that essentially is curving because there's also a lot of magnetic field here, which was applied to this particular plate simply to test various effects of positrons. Now in this particular case, what's interesting is that the curvature suddenly increases and that's because it drops in the energy level as it passes through the plate itself. Either way though, this was essentially a visual proof of the existence of antimatter, and this was from back in 1933. So since then, obviously we've learned quite a lot about the idea of matter and antimatter. And so here, it is a pretty reasonable explanation that all of the success was from the annihilation of dark matter particles and dark matter antiparticles. And because certain scientists do believe that this is what's happening here, they wanted to investigate this in more detail by trying to find even more proof. And that's kind of what the scientists behind this paper that you can find in the description below decided to do. They took 11 years of data from the Fermi telescope, they then also compared this to data from some of the other telescopes, 
and then by making certain theoretical predictions even took a look at 48 galaxies nearby, so so-called dwarf galaxies that are orbiting around the Milky Way galaxy, and tried to discover something similar in them as well. And so basically so far this was the one study that used the most possible data and with the most rigorous statistical analysis, providing the most detailed numerical explanation of what we're observing coming from this central region. For this they even used one of the telescopes from the International Space Station which collected data for the past few years. And well in the end, what all of this suggests is that even though technically pulsars are still a possible explanation, currently dark matter seems to be a slightly better explanation, and they provide some evidence for this. And one of their main explanations here is in regards to the distribution of energy detected from these sources of gamma ray energy. So generally speaking, if this is coming from a typical matter or a typical pulsar emitting these gamma rays, we would actually expect a relatively large distribution of gamma ray energy with quite a lot of lower gamma rays and higher gamma rays coming from those particular sources. Yet if this is some sort of a dark matter particle annihilating when the particle and antiparticle collides, their energy is probably going to be relatively similar with the actual emissions ended up being more narrow, in a much more specific frequency. And so despite the clumpiness of these sources, they do seem to emit energy that's much more narrow, as if it was emitted by some sort of particle-antiparticle annihilation. And because a lot of this energy is concentrated specifically in the center of the galaxy, this also goes with all of the other dark matter theories that predict the highest concentration of dark matter right in the middle of a typical galaxy. So you would expect to have the highest concentration of the excess gamma rays coming from these regions. However, the thing is, when they looked at other galaxies nearby, and here we're just talking about dwarf galaxies located close to the Milky Way galaxy, they did not find any excess gamma rays here. However, according to the scientists, this non-detection actually just means that we can now narrow down the energy levels for those particles and antiparticles, and even providing the approximate value for the total energy this particle would have. But with the energy coming from our own galaxy, fitting pretty nicely with the predictions of what a typical dark matter annihilation would create. And so this is a somewhat interesting and somewhat um, unsatisfactory discovery, I guess. On the one hand, it does suggest that this unusual glow could still be definitely dark matter or definitely a lot of pulsars. But the data from the study does actually imply that whatever is causing this is an extremely specific particle of a very specific energy level. A particle that could hypothetically be dark matter, but could also be something entirely different. And moreover, because no such detections were found from nearby dwarf galaxies, this also makes this somewhat unusual because we do expect these uh, galaxies to have a lot of dark matter in them as well. But because they're not emitting similar gamma ray radiation, either they have their own levels of particles in them, or a more likely explanation here is that, well, that there is really no good explanation here, that it's still a really, really big mystery, and nobody is actually certain what exactly is causing this unusual glow this excess glow of gamma rays coming from the center of the Milky Way galaxy, but not from the nearby galaxies. Or, I guess the mystery is still as mysterious as it was back in 2009 when it was originally found. But can we actually solve this anytime soon? Well, probably not. Mostly because, at this point, some other angle has to be taken, some other considerations have to be made in order to figure out what's really happening here. The amount of data analyzed in the study is actually tremendous, and the statistical approach taken here is also quite rigorous as well. And so even though the implication from this study is that it's maybe dark matter or some sort of an energetic particle, in reality there's just no good explanation. And so in some sense, we're back to square one. We still have no idea what's going on, and it's just another mystery to add to the list of mysteries of the universe. Which by the way is a playlist on this channel and there are like a lot of videos if you want to watch them. Anyway, so on that note, well, it's an unsatisfactory conclusion to the video, but once we learn more I'll make sure to follow this up with something else. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by joining the channel membership, or maybe buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.